Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Michael Bracchio here at Velocity Sports Rehab, and in this episode, we're going to go over patellar tendinopathy. The patellar tendon is located on the front of your knee and attaches between your kneecap and your shin. The patellar tendon transfers forces that are generated in the quadricep muscles to the lower leg, which will cause the lower leg to extend. Patellar tendinopathy is considered to be an overload syndrome. What this means is that the load that we're placing upon the patellar tendon has exceeded its amount that it can tolerate. The pain on patellar tendinopathy is located just on the bottom side of the patella and is worse with activity. Activities that tend to aggravate patellar tendinopathies are running, jumping, and squatting. Imaging, such as x-ray or MRI, are generally not needed for the diagnosis of patellar tendinopathy. This is because tendon structure and pain are poorly correlated. The only time that we would need imaging is if we wanted to rule out a different diagnosis. The first thing we need to do when treating patellar tendinopathy is to decrease the load that we're placing upon the patellar tendon. We don't need to offload the tendon completely, but we do need to offload it enough that we can decrease the pain of the patellar tendon. The general rule is that we can do any activity as long as it doesn't cause pain 24 hours after that activity. The rehab strategy for patellar tendinopathy generally occurs in four different stages. In the first stage, we do what's called isometric loading, which is where we'll contract the quadricep muscles while keeping our joints still. So two examples that we could do for exercises in this stage would include either a wall sit or a Spanish squat. For both of these exercises, we would start with a 30 second hold for three to five reps and progress up to 45 seconds, again for three to five reps. The second stage for patellar tendinopathy rehab would include isotonic loading, which means that we're going to start adding weight to some of the movements. The movements we'd start off loading would include the leg press and squats. We would start off doing 15 reps for between 3 and 5 sets, progressing the weight so that we could do 6 reps for again 3 to 5 reps. Once we were able to do that, we would start single leg training. So we would either do a single leg leg press or we would do a split squat, again starting at 15 reps for 3 to 5 sets and then adding weight so that we can do 6 reps for 3 to 5 sets. The third stage of patellar tendinopathy rehab would include plyometric training. In this stage, the movements that we'd incorporate would be dependent on the demands of the sport. So if we were training either a volleyball player or a basketball player, we would start to incorporate some jumping motions, or if we were training a football player, we might start incorporating some quick cutting motions. When we're doing plyometric training, we want to do it every three days. That'll give enough time for the collagen to adapt. The final stage of patellar tendinopathy rehab is returning to sport. So in this stage, we start to do a lot more sport-specific movements while incorporating more speed and more power through those movements so that we can return to sport safely. Passive therapies can also be used alongside the rehab program to make the rehab program more tolerable. Treatments that we can do in the clinic include joint mobilizations, soft tissue therapy, and also kinesiology taping to help decrease the sensitivity of the patellar tendon and also of the quadricep muscles as well. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Doc Talk. I hope that you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.